you will hear a woman called Tanya talking to her friend called Simon, who lives abroad. Tanya is planning to visit Simon. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello? Hi, is that Tanya? Yes, Simon. Lovely to hear you. How are you? Very well, and we're so looking forward to seeing you. So am I. Now, I don't have a lot of time, I'm afraid, so I wanted to make sure we've got all your details. Have you confirmed your flights? Yes, I'm definitely coming on the 22nd of June. Excellent. Have you got your flight number? Not with me, I'm afraid, but I promise I'll email it. Let me make a note of all this. Yes, do, because one of us will try to come and collect you from the airport, if we can. I presume you'll be coming into Terminal 1? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to find out which one it is. Yes, you must. <laughs> we don't want to be waiting at the wrong one. But hang on. I'll be arriving at about lunchtime, and that'll mean you have to take time off work to pick me up. You really mustn't do that. Look, we're not all that busy at work, and if there's a problem, I can text you when you arrive, and you can take a taxi. OK. There's a really good company called Pantera. Can you spell that? It's P-A-N-T-E-R-A. -E they have a stand at the airport. You can't miss it, and they're really reliable. Great, thanks. How far are you from the airport? About 40 minutes. And you're near the city centre, aren't you? We're east of it, actually. Uh, don't tell the driver city centre because you'll really get caught up in traffic. OK. And I'll make sure I carry your address with me. Now, have you got my mobile uh, cell phone number? Yes. You sent it last month. But I tell you what, I don't think I've got yours. I'd better have it now, just in case. OK. And I changed it recently anyway. Ready? It's 07765-328-4000. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Thanks. Now, what should I pack? Well, all the usual. Casual clothes, mainly. Though you'd better bring an evening dress. We'll be having at least one fancy dinner in a hotel restaurant. OK, now, when you're coming, unfortunately the weather is not going to be brilliant. I know. It's the rainy season. I'm bringing an umbrella. Uh, we have tons of those, so don't pack one. But pack a raincoat, a good one, because we'll try and get out for plenty of hikes. OK, sure. Sounds super. Just what I love. And I'd better remember to pack my sturdy walking shoes. Excellent idea. It's pretty rugged round here, so they have to be tough. I can imagine. I'm so looking forward to getting out. Oh, Simon. Before I forget, you recommended I read a book about your area. Yeah. What was the name again? I'd like to read it, to get an idea of the history, etc. It's called Mountain Lives, and it's... Hang on, I'm just writing it 
down. Okay? And it's by Rex Campbell. Great. I'll try and get hold of that. Well worth it. Now, the really important things are gifts. Oh, don't worry about that. Just bring yourself. I know. <laughs> But I'd like to get something for your parents. What about Janice? I know she loves English tea. Oh, that's very kind. But she's not drinking so much of that these days. But she'd love some chocolate. You know her favourite. Oh, yes. That'd be nice. I'll do that. And Alec, is he still into racing? <laughs> very much so. I was thinking of bringing a calendar, you know, with horse racing pictures. What a good idea. He'd love that. Great. So that's about it, I think. Yes, I think so. So you'll send me your number again? That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2 You will hear a new student, Stefan, talking to an assistant, Anna, at the student union about his membership. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Hi, can I help you? Um, yeah, I hope so. Um, this is the first time I've been down to the Union. I'm a new international student and I just wondered what to do. Oh, right. Well, normally we ask international students to fill out this form and we put your details on the wall by reception. Then other students can contact you. It's a way for everybody to get to know each other. It can be a bit lonely otherwise. <laughs> oh, I see. What's your name? I'm Anna, by the way. It's Stefan Unger. OK, well, just write that there, next to name, uh -huh. and then fill in the rest. All right. Um... What does it mean, degree programme? Oh, uh, just if you are an undergraduate or a postgraduate. Or maybe you're just here for a short course? I'm a postgraduate. Oh. Uh, do I need to say what in? Not really. It's too much detail. But you should put your department so people who have the same interests or problems as you can get in touch. So I'm studying marine construction, so... For department, do I put down the science faculty then? Uh, just your actual department. That must be engineering, no? Oh, I see, yes. Then if you list what you like doing in your free time, not that we ever get any when we're studying, <laughs> and maybe you can meet up with someone socially or to join a club or something. Well, I like lots of things. Shall I just list them? Um, my advice is to just put one or two, like football and films or whatever. Otherwise, you'll get so many invitations, you won't get any time to work. OK. I think I'll just list computer games, as that's my big interest. Oh. I haven't played football for ages. <laughs> I may start to play once I get settled. Now, let's see. Next thing is languages. Yes. We find many of the international students get a bit tired of speaking English all the time. Sometimes they like to speak to someone in their own language. 
It's up to you. That is a good idea. I presume I don't need to put English down. Oh, no. <laughs> I put、um, Italian and French. <laughs> I can only speak German, my mother tongue. OK, a y well, that's fine. Just put that. Uh, what does accommodation mean? Is that my address? We're trying to find similarities between people, and some people live in hall, some are in flats, some are in bedsits. So it helps if you say. I'm in hall, though I'd like to be in a flat, but that won't happen till the end of the first term. Put where you are now. You can always change it later.、Uh, then finally, just put your phone number. I haven't really got one. I haven't sorted out a mobile yet. Well, it's going to be difficult for people to contact you then, isn't it?、Mm. Why don't you put the union one and we'll take messages for you? OK. a y It's 02950659003. Have you got that? Uh, Yes. OK a y then. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Oh, I had a couple more questions about the services you've got here.、Um, it says there's a photocopier here. Yes, you need to get a card from the shop, and then it's available to all students in the mornings. The union uses it after 1 pm. OK. a y I see also the union organises loads of events. Are they always held here in the union building? It looks big enough. <laughs> If you're interested in something, you should check the poster or our website. In fact, we normally use the round theatre opposite the conference centre for most events because the sound system is better. Right, I'll do that. Also, I wanted to hire a van. Can I do that through you? Um, No, you need to present a case, really.、Ah. They're not just available for hire to anyone.、Mm. The president said we have to limit who is allowed to hire them. The person you need to see is the transport secretary. She's on the second floor. OK, a y thanks. The other thing is are all the discounts we get with our union card listed on the back of the card? I thought there might be more. No, that's it, I'm afraid. Mainly books, clothes, and music. Though we are currently negotiating to get one on newspapers, so that should be valid from next term. OK. Thanks a lot for your help. Section 3. In this section, you will hear a discussion between a tutor, Dr. Lester, and two students, Greg and Alexandra, at the end of a talk about music. In the first part of the discussion, they are talking about some of the students' favourite instruments and favourite styles of music. Complete the table showing the students' opinions. Choose your answers from the box. There are more words than spaces, so you will not use them all. You may use any of the words more than once. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. I think it's time we looked at the results of our survey. Uh, what did you find out, Alexandra? We're a group with very diverse tastes, Dr Lester. Hmm, I'm not surprised. What were the favourite instruments? Well, Greg loves drums. He told me he played drums when he was at primary school, and now he plays drums with his friends at weekends. They have a band. Hmm, good. Uh, what do you like to play, Alexandra? My favourite is the guitar. However, I haven't played for years, so I keep hoping to start again. Will I go on with the others? Hmm, yes, please. Katya is like Greg. She loves to listen to drums. She says she's not a player, just a listener. Rachel, as you know, is a violinist. So, of course, it's natural that she should favour the violin. Mm, so we have two people who love the sound of the drum and two who like strings. Uh, the violin for Rachel and the guitar for Alex. What does Harry like? Harry says the best instrument of them all is the piano. He claims it's more versatile than any other instrument. Emiko plays the piano, but her favourite instrument is the flute. The flute? Yes, Emiko plays the flute too, of course. Hmm. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, Greg, will you tell us the students' favourite style of music? We're really very conservative. My favourite is classical music, and that's Alexandra's choice too. Katja claims to like rock. So that's a vote from Greg, Alexandra and Katja. Uh, doesn't Rachel prefer classical music? Rachel made a choice which surprised me. She plays the violin, so I expected classical or opera. But Rachel says that she prefers country music. Mm, how interesting. What's Harry's choice? Harry likes to listen to opera and loves to go to see a performance. He says opera has everything. Colour and spectacle and theatre and great music. And Emiko? Emiko says jazz is her favourite music. She goes to listen to jazz every Friday evening. She also likes opera, heavy metal, classical, but jazz is the best. Thank you, Greg. I wanted to see what you all liked so I could understand your musical tastes more. And I want to move from this to a discussion of the physiological effects of music. In the second part of the discussion, Dr Lester will talk about the way music affects our bodies. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. For the purposes of uh, this discussion, I'm going to divide music roughly into two types, music which stimulates us and music which calms us. It seems that music which stimulates us gives rise to actual changes in our bodies. We listen to exciting music and our hearts beat faster, our blood pressure rises and our blood flows more quickly. In short, we're stimulated. Soothing music, however, has the opposite effect. We relax and let the world go by. Our heart beats more gently, our blood pressure drops, and we feel calm. Um, Alexandra, can you think of things which help us to relax? Um, gentle rhythms? Yes, in part. The melodies which help us to relax are smooth flowing and often have repeated rhythms. These rhythms are constant and dynamic a little like the crash of the sea on the beach. Their very predictability is sedating, relaxing. By contrast, very loud, discordant music with unpredictable rhythms and structures excites and stimulates us. These two generalisations about the differences between music which stimulates and music which soothes are true as far as they go, but they are far from conclusive. We still have a lot of research to do to find out what, uh, for instance, people of different cultures hear and feel when they listen to music. 
This department is taking part in a continuing study on the influence of culture on musical perception, and we'll talk about that more next week. That is the end of section three. You will now have some time to check your answers. Section 4. In this section, you'll hear a lecture on sports injuries. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the lecture carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Morning everyone and welcome to our regular lecture on health issues. This series of lectures is organised by the Students' Union. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome Mr David Greenbaum, a physician in sports medicine, to come along and talk to us today. Thank you. You may doubt what good sports medicine can do to non-athletes like you college students. According to public assumptions, sports medicine doctors deal only with sporting injuries. But actually, we treat general joint problems experienced by average people more than treating people who hurt themselves by playing sports. So, whether you're an athlete or not, a sports medicine physician can help you start off every day on the right foot. If you are a college athlete or a sporty person, you must stay at the top of your game. But how do you maintain best physical fitness? You should be under the watchful eye of your sports team physician. Sports medicine doctors offer total care treatment, such as customised workouts, immediate care of injuries and surgery when needed. A sports medicine doctor's training falls within the speciality of orthopaedic surgery. As such, it focuses on the cartilage, ligaments and muscles involved in your body's movement. So, how do injuries happen? Most of us take for granted the intricate interactions of our bones, muscles and ligaments until they are damaged. When injured, these tissues can degenerate, causing your joints to ache and feel stiff. Even ordinary daily movements such as walking and bending may cause a sports injury through overuse. Furthermore, the normal wear and tear on your body's tissue may become more taxing as you age. To prevent such problems, especially as you begin a fitness exercise, your sports medicine doctor offers total care. This includes x-rays to identify potential trouble spots. Afterwards, he helps you set an exercise routine that fits your body's present condition. Do you know your joints? Your body's most complex structural feature is its joints. Your joints allow you to grasp, twist, sit and even feed yourself. Repetitive motions, however, may lead to chronic overuse of the soft tissue connecting bones at the joints. This overuse can result in injuries such as tennis elbow or even carpal tunnel syndrome. A more severe type of injury occurs when you lose your balance, thereby putting a joint under abnormal stress. Worse still, you could suffer a bone fracture. When a traumatic injury happens, effective medical care is crucial. Improper treatment of any joint injury can cause permanent loss of flexibility and reoccurring joint pain. As quickly as possible, the doctor applies ice packs to your injury. Ice deters swelling and inflammation so you feel less pain. After keeping it iced for the first 48 hours after injury, the doctor begins therapeutic exercise of your wounded joint. Recently, a new treatment for degenerating joints has been developed, which is a product called orthokin. The treatment involves combining healing proteins with a sample of the patient's own blood. 
The injured joint then receives an injection of the mixture. This new technology stimulates our own white blood cells to produce large quantities of protective protein. Our cells make this protein naturally, but not in sufficient amounts to protect the damaged cartilage in our joints. It also has the advantage of convenience and lack of side effects. Here are some suggestions on how to prevent sports injuries. Use appropriate protective equipment. Maintain proper lighting in the training area. Have adequate rest. Avoid alcohol and drugs in order to prevent injuries. Follow a regular fitness training program to improve overall coordination and endurance. Better endurance will absorb pressure and prevent injury. Perform adequate warm-up exercises before training or performance. Avoid performing sports or work when you are sick. Most injuries happen when one is fatigued. Avoid treatment by dubious health practitioners. Use of inappropriate massage, adjustment, and homemade medicine, often with steroids or other non-tested drugs, can cause more damage to the injury. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.